used to watch nature documentaries about animals that live in Africa, this is something that I've always observed. There are more number of zebras, gazelles, deer, elephants compared to the number of lions or cheetahs in that ecosystem, which means that there are more prey compared to the number of predators. Okay, fine. But what does this tell us? This tells us that there is some sort of relationship between different organisms in this ecosystem, which is a grassland. This is true for every ecosystem on earth. There is some relationship between different organisms in an ecosystem. Now, what are the different kinds of relationships that exist at different levels? Those relationships can be of energy or of food and other things. We know that organisms depend on other organisms for food and energy, right? And the level that each organism occupies at that ecosystem is known as the trophic level. So if you were to plot the relationship between the organisms in the form of a bar graph with the producers at the bottom level and going up the trophic level each time till you get to the highest trophic level, you would see a common shape form in every ecosystem. You would see that the relationships form the shape of a pyramid in every ecosystem where each of this rectangle, each bar here, each is a trophic level. These are called ecological pyramids and they are usually either upright or downward. Upright where the base is broad and the top is narrow or downward where the base is narrow and the top is broad. Before we move on and talk about the different types of ecological pyramids, let's take a refresher on what each trophic level is. Each trophic level represents a specific place an organism takes in the food chain or the food web. Producers form the first trophic level and plants, algae and phytoplankton are organisms that occupy this trophic level. Producers are consumed by primary consumers like grasshoppers, cows, rabbits, etc. So they form the next trophic level. These primary consumers are consumed by secondary consumers like frogs, birds and wolves. The tertiary consumers are the ones that consume either the secondary consumers or the primary consumers themselves. So these are the different trophic levels that we're going to use to create our ecological pyramids. There are three different types of ecological pyramids. There is the number pyramid, which is a pyramid of the number of individuals in an ecosystem. The biomass pyramids, which is a pyramid of all the biomass of the individuals in an ecosystem. And the energy pyramids, which show the energy at each trophic level in an ecosystem. We'll first start with number pyramids. So this is how a typical food chain of a grassland ecosystem looks like. The producers are the grass, trees and other plants, which is consumed by the primary consumers like zebra, elephants, deer and rabbit. These primary consumers are consumed by secondary consumers like wolves and snakes. Tertiary consumers like lion and cheetah, they eat either these secondary consumers or even these primary consumers. So if you were to count the number of individuals in all these trophic levels, you would see that Producers are the maximum number of individuals in that ecosystem and as we go up each trophic level, the number begins to decrease and as we reach the highest trophic level, which is the tertiary consumers, the number is the least. If you were to take this information, make it in the form of a bar graph and stack it starting with producers, you would get a number pyramid that looks like this. So the number pyramid shows that the producers are the highest in number in the grassland ecosystem. And as we go up each trophic level, the number of individuals is going to decrease, which is why it is an upright pyramid. The base is broad and the apex or the top is narrow. Now, this, of course, does not take into consideration the animals that occupy two different trophic levels like secondary and primary consumers. This is one of the shortcomings of ecological pyramids. Next, we'll talk about biomass pyramids. Before we talk about biomass pyramids, let's just take a refresher on what is biomass. Biomass includes the mass of all organisms in an area at a given time. Because it is the mass of all organisms in an area, the SI unit of biomass is usually kg per meter square. 
let's go back to our grassland ecosystem with the number of individuals in each trophic level if you were to calculate the biomass of these individuals you would naturally get a high number for grass and trees and as you go up the trophic levels the number is going to keep on decreasing and you would have the least number for the tertiary consumers like lion and cheetah and again if you were to plot this in the form of bar graph and stack it starting with producers first at the base you're going to get a biomass pyramid that looks something like this this again is an upright pyramid because the base is much bigger than the top and we have this shape of a biomass pyramid for this ecosystem because again producers are more in number which is why they have a higher biomass compared to the tertiary consumers which are fewer in numbers so they have a much less biomass so as we go up each trophic level the biomass is going to decrease because the number of individuals in the ecosystem is also decreasing next we'll talk about energy pyramids energy pyramids show the flow of energy in an ecosystem and the flow in an ecosystem always starts from the sun the sun is the main source of energy for plants and other photosynthesizing animals so when the plants absorb the energy from the sun they are absorbing maximum amount of energy why is this important because each time we go up the trophic level there is heat loss that is occurring which means a lot of energy is lost in the form of heat and only some energy is transferred from one trophic level to another so this means that we always start off with the highest amount of energy in plants and as we go up the trophic level we have the least amount of energy in the tertiary consumers and if you were to plot this information in the form of a graph and stack it starting with producers at the base you would get an energy pyramid that look like this if you can see here we are starting off with 100000 joules of energy that is present with producers at a given time but when primary consumers eat the producers a lot of energy is lost as heat and only around 10% is actually transferred from the producers to the primary consumers and again only 10% is transferred to secondary consumers and only 10% is transferred to the tertiary consumers so they have the least amount of energy at a given time the tertiary consumer trophic level while the producers have the most amount of energy at a given time which again makes this an upright pyramid so till now we've talked about the number biomass and energy pyramids it might be interesting to note that the biomass and number pyramids can be inverted or downwards but the energy pyramid can always only be upright it can never be downwards because the energy is always going to decrease as we go up the trophic levels it is never going to increase we'll end this video right here and in another video we'll pick up exactly where we left off where we're going to talk about the types of inverted pyramids